Hello, and welcome back to Mellow Labs. A few weeks ago, I made a chat control bubble machine that you yourself can control through my bi-weekly YouTube live stream, and it's been proven very popular. So today, I'd like to expand on my chat controlled offerings by adding a chat controlled silly string dispenser. Right, I'm gonna clean up and then we can begin. So these are the tin cans I want to use and my idea for this is actually pretty simple. I want to put a servo on top that's going to, you know, press the thing uh, and I need a way to just hold the servo to the can. So I'm thinking some kind of 3D printed holder there and the servo needs quite a bit of, you know, uh, pressure to push against it. So I'm thinking some kind of bottom support that will just kind of keep the servo in place whilst it's trying to move. Uh, so yeah, some kind of thing like that, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna model this can in uh, Fusion 360 and we can go from there. After a while of modeling, I have exactly what I thought I want, but now looking at it, I'm realizing that this is a lot of uh, 3D printed plastic that is not doing much. So I've got the, the back brace that holds the can with the bottom foot that holds it in place when the servo presses in. I've got the servo mount and all that, but this is a lot of plastic to print. So I'm gonna go and ponder on this a lot more, but I think I can get this to be a lot smaller and still do the same job. So after a few iterations, I think I have something that will actually work better than what I was planning for. So instead of holding the entire can, I'm only going to attach myself to these points up here, which like don't seem like a lot, but there's enough there for me to like clamp onto so that I don't push the can down when I need to. So what I've done is I've modeled these parts of the can uh, with a little more detail so that I can just cut them out of this shape. And what I'm gonna do now is just print this piece as like a test piece to see if it actually fits properly around the can and see if that has as much holding strength as I hope it does. And if it does, I'll continue with this design. About 20 minutes later, I've got my little test part and it actually fits on pretty well. There's a couple pieces that I've missed, like I've completely missed modeling this part. So it's, there's, it's only holding on to this ridge here, but it's actually holding on pretty darn well. So uh, I'm gonna print out another test piece where it's actually holding on to this as well. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Another 20 minutes later and I've got my uh, second test part and I've kind of messed this one up because this one doesn't want to fit on at all. Uh, I think I've I've screwed up the dimensions somewhere, but it also doesn't want to fit in under this little lip that I've modeled in. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that into consideration, remodel it, and print another test part. All right, so here is my third and final test print, and it fits on perfectly. Like I couldn't have asked for all those curves and ridges to to align better than they do. So this is this is it. I'm gonna continue with this and I'm gonna model the uh, the servo mount on this. The next thing I'm gonna print is just the whole clamp to see if I can actually, you know, get it to slide on properly on both sides. And there it is, that's the full clamp and it's actually really good. Apart from like that, but that's not really a problem. With both screws either side, it's just gonna even out the pressure, not a problem. But uh, yeah, it fits on perfectly. It has loads of holding force. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident in this one. Uh, the best part of this is now I can go model a servo holder on one half of this, just reprint that one half and then slot it back on. And hopefully we'll be actually able to test this with a servo. So I'm gonna go back into Fusion, model the servo holder, print it out and get back to you. Right, I've got the uh, servo mount hot of the uh, 3D printer and I'm planning to use one of these, you know, the, the bigger servos because I need the torque that this offers. And hopefully that should just Oh, damn it. Okay, I think that's just the elephant's foot. Give me a minute. And now, hopefully, that should just fit on there. Oh, it does. Oh, it's perfect. Look at that. Sick. So now, that should go on here, like that. Let's aim that that way. And hopefully, the servo should be able to press that. Oh, that is perfect. Okay. That's, that's great. Right, let me get a servo tester and see if we can actually get it to do the thing with the servo. Oh, it's perfect. Uh, yes, this can is mostly empty now, which is kind of perfect for testing. Oh, that is so good. Yes, 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 yes. 
My next steps are to mount some kind of a microcontroller probably here, along with some kind of voltage regulator, because last time I tried using these servos with a D1 Mini and going through its USB power connection, uh, I kept frying the little voltage regulator because this pulls a lot more current than that can deliver. So hopefully uh, those two will like fit on there and maybe I can like make this part a lot thinner because I clearly don't need it as much as I thought I did. So maybe I can just like have something that just goes around here that doesn't, I don't know, maybe just a zip tie would do. Um, can I engineer that to work with a zip tie? Yeah, I probably could. If I just make this like a little lower, which I'm gonna have to for the microcontroller, I could just put a zip tie around here and hold it tight. I'm gonna go work on this and come back to you when it needs assembly. See you in a bit. And here it is. Hopefully it fits on just right. And it does, awesome. Uh, I did model in a hole for the zip tie. Let's see if that goes in smoothly. Oh, it actually does. When you put it in the right way, it goes in perfectly, awesome. Okay, uh, and the servo, I, I can already see there's a bit of an elephant's foot, so I'm probably gonna have to uh, file it down a little bit. Okay, so now, once again, I will stick in the zip tie and hopefully that will go around here, like so, like that. Awesome. So that's not coming off there. That is, that seems plenty good enough. Got the servo that will go on here, like that. And, uh, oh yeah, that needs to face this way. And then that presses and fires, fantastic. I've not actually thought about this, but I need to put the D1 Mini here. I've not come up with a good way of like attaching it. The D1 Mini is a great microcontroller, but it has so many little annoying things about it. Like the fact that it doesn't have a single like screw hole or anything, just like I, my only option is to like hot glue it down which is not perfect, but it does work. And for power, not to overcomplicate it, I was gonna put in like a back boost converter on here, but it really doesn't really need it. So I'm just gonna have a little um, USB breakout board, which will let me bypass the, um, the voltage regulator that's on the D1 Mini, hopefully not frying it. So I'll glue that on here. I'll, uh, I'll glue this on here. I'll do the soldering and uh, program it. And this really is a simple project. There's only like five connections I need to make here. So uh, we're probably coming out of the voiceover right about now. So everything's done. I uh, put my zip tie through there, put it on here this way around so that that presses in the right direction. Let's, um, I don't, I don't really want to do up the zip tie yet because well this can's empty so um i'll just i'll leave it undone for now right let me get a usb cable and we can start programming can you write me a script for esp home for a d1 mini to control a servo motor connected to d2 man programming is really easy these days Right, let's go to Home Assistant, ESP Home, create new thing, uh, yep, Silly String Shooter. Uh, on an ESP8266, uh, install, uh, it is connected to this computer, we have to wait for it to uh, compile the script, but in the meanwhile we can open uh, ESP Home Web, connect, and this should be our uh, D1 Mini that we're connected to, and we just have to wait for the script to finish compiling. So we click download project, go over to the uploader, click install, select the, uh, the silly string shooter file and install. Connecting, erasing, installing. All right, it's been installed. We can click close on here and we should have a silly string shooter come up online here. Fantastic. Uh, let's go over to our integrations where well, it's already found it. We can click configure, finish, go over to here, go over to where it's located right there. And we have nothing in it. Oh, because I didn't actually put the code into the thing. Okay, we're gonna go back to ESP home. We're gonna go to the silly string shooter. And now we're gonna paste in the code that GPT gave us. Uh, there is an error. 
we click upload wirelessly, it's going to give us an error, but that's good because what we're going to do now is we're going to copy it and we're going to give it back to GPT saying, hey, dumbass, I got this error. We're going to get rid of the dumbass just because if the AI uprising does happen, I don't want that on record. And now it's going to think about it really hard and give me a, a better version that will actually work. Alrighty, and once again, we can just copy uh, that and paste it in here. That still seems to be giving me some kind of error, but I'm sure again, we just repeat the process until ChatGPT figures it out. Who needs a brain when you have generative AI? Once again, we're just going to copy what it gave us and paste it in here. Okay, the errors are gone, so that's good. Let's click save and install. And now we wait. Okay, it's uploaded. So now we should be able to go back to my uh, integration and click on the uh, silly string shooter where we now have, okay, that's an interesting way of doing that. Sure, zero, 180. Z Okay, well, this is useless code, so I'm going to have to write my own. One moment, please. Okay, let's install that, and hopefully that works, because humans are bigger brains. Okay, it's uploaded. We can once again. So now we have control over that. Okay, not quite. Um, oh, I've set it to D1. Okay, so in this case, I am the stupid one. Third time's the charm. Okay, good. Okay, well, we need to change the position of this because it's not in the right thing. Okay, 60 seems to be like the lowest point and then we'll go up to uh, like 120 to keep it off. Okay, 60, 120. So now what I wanna do is I wanna program in a, a two switches in Home Assistant. One of them will just keep the, uh, keep the servo down just shooting out silly string. And then I'll have a second one that only sprays it for like three seconds. And that will be the one that will be controlled by sh by chat. I haven't decided on three seconds yet. It's just an estimate. Let's program it. Good news. We've got the two buttons I've created. We've got push servo down. And that pushes it down for a few seconds. And then we have push servo down and stay down. And that should stay down until I decide to release it. Awesome. So with that working, I'm now going to go wait for the new silly string to arrive and make another one of these because I actually want two of these to, you know, spray me on the live stream. Um, see you now. Good news. I'm back from open source. Also, silly string arrived. Don't forget to shake them. Right, so I've got the silly string dispensers armed and ready, and I'm flinching because there are two people behind the camera actively trying to spray me with it whilst I'm trying to... This does not taste good. <laughs> there are two people actively... <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of Metal Labs. If you enjoy what I do here, please consider liking, liking and subscribing. And uh, if, if you want to see more of this... <laughs> Please join me on next week's live stream. Um, thank you. Goodbye. Oh, it does not taste good. Let me at least get through like a sentence to say like, thank you. Oh no, it's the perfect headshot. Oh my God. It's gonna run out. It's gonna run out, Jimmy. No, stop. It goes stop. Well, thank you for watching this episode of Metal Labs. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to see more of these, please consider coming over to my weekly, bi-weekly live stream. And uh, <laughs> if you enjoy what I do here, please consider supporting me over on Patreon as well as, you know, liking, commenting and all that other stuff. Um, until next week's live stream, goodbye. Okay, hold up. <laughs> oh god. You used all of yours instantly. <laughs>